Good morning and welcome. If you're joining us on Facebook, be sure and like us and share this with somebody if you can. Hey, it's been an interesting week. You know, the state of Georgia and several other states have have decided to begin the process of reopening and uh, having people return to work and some other activities. And people have been asking, uh, what's Southside going to do? Well, we will resume, resume in-person services when it's safe and we can meet all the protocols necessary to protect those who come and to facilitate the best worship experience. So we'll be keeping everybody posted. Be sure and check out the various uh, means by which we get information out. Last week, we started uh, talking about what it means to be in an in-between place, in between what has happened and what will happen, yet we're still having to wait. We are in one of those places, in between place. You know that in between place, be the beginning of this COVID uh, nineteen uh, event, and what will happen when it's all done. And uh, and this can be very a difficult time for people, and it's been a very difficult time for us. Uh, in the life of the first disciples of Jesus, they came into an in between place themselves. Fifty days between the death of Jesus Christ, his crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection, and uh, the event that would start what we call the church, which we call the day of Pentecost. <clears throat> there are some lessons that we can learn from that experience that they went through that will help us navigate our own in-between time. Last week, we talked about not going back, you know, not returning to old habits or old ways of coping but looking to the Lord for what he wants to do today. But this week, I believe the Lord wants us to discover how it can help us if we're open to anticipation. In Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, God uses what God wants to speak to us about being open to anticipation. Verse 1, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which we, you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up uh, before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. And they were look looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into the heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. You see, Jesus had asked his disciples, disciples and he's asking us today to be open to anticipation. Have you ever met somebody who was so excited about Christmas they began to count down the days to Christmas starting January 1st? We've all had events that we have been excited about or anticipating their coming. Maybe a wedding or the birth of a child. Denise and I uh, will have a new grandbaby this week. We're so excited and we've been filled with anticipation for that. Maybe a graduation or starting a new job. Jesus was returning home to heaven, having completed the task that he had come to accomplish into, in our world. He knew he was a, that what was about to happen would equip his dis disciples and his followers with, to take the message of salvation and transformation around the world. He didn't want them to be discouraged with his leaving. 
He wanted to create an openness of anticipation in their lives. God knows what's about to happen. He always has a plan to make something positive come out of a negative circumstance. That's why it's important for us to be open to anticipation. Here's some thoughts about why, about why that's important. First off, it creates hope. In verses 7 and 8 of uh, Acts 1, it says, He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Hope is an essential for spiritual and mental health. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says this, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. You see, hope is tied to the belief that God has a plan and he has a promise for us. Jesus gave a promise to his disciples so that they would have hope for what was yet coming. You see, faith reminds us that God is in our today, but hope reminds us that God is already in our tomorrow. The disciples had a hope that something was coming that would radically change their lives, that would give them a power they didn't yet have. I believe that God has something powerful for our future if we don't lose hope. The second thing that makes this openness to anticipation important is that it helps us go through the process. In verses 4 and 5, it says, On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Listen, the process of waiting is never easy. I don't like it. You don't like it. But God has a purpose in the process. Uh, my father-in-law, Herschel Deer, and he's, he's an amazing man, been an amazing influence in my life. And he's a great storyteller. And he tells a story about when he was a little boy. Um, his mom had uh, made a banana pudding, or had fixed the banana pudding, and, and uh, had put it in the uh, icebox to finish the process before it'd be ready to eat. And so uh, she knew Herschel, and she knew his, his uh, way of doing things, and she told him, she said, Herschel, if you get into that banana pudding before it's ready, it can make you sick and maybe even make you, kill you. So don't get in that banana pudding. This created a huge dilemma in my father-in-law's young life at the time. He, he loved banana pudding, and, and so he just, he, he was just struggling. What do I do? Yeah, because he really wanted to get into that banana pudding. Finally, he just uh, decided that there are some things worth dying for. And he got him a spoon, and he took a big old bite of that banana pudding. And here's one of the things that happened, though. Although he got into it, and it was good, it wasn't quite ready. And it wasn't as good as it could be. You see, preempting the process or quitting on the process always leads to an unsatisfactory result. In 1 Corinthians 9.24, it says, Do you not know that in a race, all the race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. If you've ever run a race, you know this. There's a point in there where you want to give up. You don't want to stick to the process. You don't want to believe in your training. You don't want to believe that what you're working toward is worth the goal. But you have to stay in the process in order to win the race. God has a plan beyond where we are. And in this between time, there's a process happening in our life to prepare us for where we're going. We need to be willing to walk through the process. We don't want to preempt something by trying to get ahead of what God wants to do. That's why we're being so careful in how we prepare for what's next. The third thing is that it, this whole being open to anticipation encourages us to prepare. In verse 10 and 11, it says, 
and they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. And when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into the heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. If we're open to anticipation and will not be looking back, but looking forward to what will come, we can begin to prepare for it. As a child, I always looked forward to my grandparents coming to visit. We never lived close to them. It was always several hundred miles to their home, and every once in a while they would come. We would be excited about that, but that meant we had to do some preparation. Anticipation of them coming required some preparation. The house had to be cleaned. The yard had to be mowed. Beds had to be weeded, and and rooms had to be prepared. Food had to be uh, acquired and, and put together because we were anticipating the visit. Something good was going to happen, but we had to prepare for it. Jesus wanted his disciples to have lives and hearts prepared for what was coming next. They had to prepare. As a matter of fact, there had to be a leadership replacement taken because Judas had failed and betrayed Jesus. Somebody new had to be brought into his position. Their hearts, their lives had to be prepared for what was coming next. It wasn't just jump right into it, but God had a plan and he was preparing them for what would be next. He's asking us to prepare in anticipation of what he will do next in our lives and in the life of our church and of our community. There's a danger of knowing something good is coming and not preparing for it. There's a story in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. It says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but they did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. And at midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And all the virgins woke up, trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell the oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on the way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, others, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know what the day or the hour. You see, five of the girls had prepared and five had not. Five were anticipating, ready, preparing to be there when the, the moment came. It's important that we be prepared. You see, God is asking us to be prepared for what is about to happen as we move into the new uh, things that will move when we get out of this in-between place. But he's also wanting us to be prepared for what God is yet to do. Jesus, everything Jesus is doing now is preparing the world for when he comes back. You see, we need to be ready for that moment as well. I'm preparing for what God wants to do in the next few days and weeks as we move out of this COVID-19 and into what God has set aside for us in the future. But I'm also preparing for that eternal home when Jesus comes back to take us. If you're ready for that, and if you're being prepared for that, I just praise God. But if you're not, you can be today. He's given you the opportunity to join with us as we Uh, open our hearts, and as we have hope in our heart for what's about to come, that we look to the promise that Jesus has a plan and that he has something good for us in the future, but also that we are open to what he's doing in our life to get us ready to 
prepare us in the process for what's coming next and to be prepared for what he's doing in the next little while and what he's going to do when he returns. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you open to his hope? I hope you are. I hope as a church that we're being very careful to to maintain that promise in our life and to to walk through the process and and to be prepared for for what's next. But if you do not know Jesus, I I just want to invite you to be ready to anticipate his return by knowing him as your Lord and Savior. You can do that today even as I pray. And for us as a church, we can ask God to help us in this in-between time to be ready, to be prepared, to be walking through the process and to live in the promise of his hope. So let's pray together this morning. Lord, I thank you that today that you want us to be anticipating what you're about to do. You have something powerful that's just on the horizon. And Lord, we want to be ready for it. We want to be prepared for it. We want to be fully engaged in it. And Lord, help us to be just wise in all that we do. And Lord, I pray that also we be ready for your return, that our hearts would be ready, our lives would be ready, and that we would be anticipating your return. Lord, forgive us where we've been unprepared. Help us, Lord, right now to to be prepared for your return. Take away anything in our life that would separate us from you. Let our focus and our attention be on this anticipation that you are going to do something great in the, the next little while and that you're preparing us to live with you for eternity. Lord, I ask that you'd step into our lives and that you would prepare us what's next. Lord, help us in this in-between time. And Lord, we thank you for it, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I look forward to seeing you in person very soon. I believe God's got something exciting uh, ahead of us. But if we should not have that opportunity, if he comes back before that, I look forward to seeing you uh, in the return of Jesus Christ as well. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again soon.